Hello ladies, welcome back to Music and Beauty TV. As you can see by the title, today we're doing a styling video. This is like a styling basics video. It's not the most complex, but definitely something I hope that could help some beginners in what you do with hair after you install a weave. So here is an example of two of my clients, the before and after. These are the tools that we're going to be using today, or at least some of them. I'm gonna list all the tools and products below in the description. So let's jump right in. Starting out, I'm starting with my long haired client. So the first thing you're gonna to do to get your client's weave hair ready is use either some heat protectant spray or some bio silk, which pretty much just protects the hair, gives it a little bit of shine and luster. We're gonna move on to straightening this hair out. It is not necessary to straighten the hair out before you curl the hair as you will see in a short clip I show you later on. But because both of the clients in these videos wanted me to do some sort of trimming to their hair, it's a lot easier to trim the hair once it's straightened because you can see everything evenly. So step one, we're gonna straighten it out with either a flat iron or you can just blow dry it straight. Like I said, depending on how curly the hair is, you may not even need to do either one. I'm using a hairstyler flat iron, the black one, and I'm also using the red one. Just going back and forth between both clients to show you guys that I'm straightening their hair out first. I'm also grabbing their natural hair and straightening it too. Because we're gonna go into styling right after this, I'm not trying to get it the most bone straight it can possibly be, but relatively straight, at least straight enough so that I can see it clearly when it comes time for me to trim. Now if your client has relatively coarse hair that is not going to get straight enough with a flat iron, at this point you will go in and you would press their leave out. If you want me to do a video showing you how to style hair that is a lot more coarse than these girls, someone, someone who I actually need to press their leave out in order to get it to blend with the weave, then like this video and comment below and I can have that video up shortly. Make sure that you guys add some heat protectant spray to your client's natural hair. I didn't show that in this video, but always do that to protect their natural hair from heat damage. And now we're gonna move on to trimming the bangs. So a lot of times clients who buy this expensive hair, they don't want you to cut it up. All they want is for you to blend their natural leave out with the length of the weave you've installed. So you'll need to trim some sort of bangs and do just a little bit of blending on both sides of the hair. I'm showing you guys step by step what I did to this client's bangs because she definitely had bangs that were a little more feathered and layered. I'm not an expert hair cutter, I just kind of go with the flow and do what works for me. But if you can learn anything from this process, then by all means, do so. Most important thing is to just check your work. Don't trim too much off all at once. Take baby steps and make sure that the lengths are blending. You don't want to have like a really long piece in the front and then a short piece in the back because ideally you want it to go from shorter to longer moving back into the client's hair. To avoid the hair looking too heavy or blunt at the ends, I'm going in with my shears and thinning it out at the bottom. If you're not sure exactly how to do this, definitely look at some hair cutting videos on YouTube. They're very, very helpful. There are a ton of experts on hair cutting that give all kinds of tips and tricks. I usually do that myself and then I just take their techniques and apply them and just learn as I go. And after you're finished with that, then we're gonna go ahead and lay these edges. So this client's hair is a little more coarse than the others. So for her, I'm actually using edge control on her edges and they're laying right down. Sometimes you'll have a client with hair that's extremely coarse and you may need to use gel and edge control. With this client, her hair is very soft and fine, so I actually use some Eco Styler gel and I'm gonna go in afterward and I'm gonna blow dry it so that it can dry hard. You can do the same thing with edge control, but if you blow dry the edge control, you wanna blow dry it on cool, otherwise it'll probably melt. And if you blow dry gel, then you wanna blow dry it on a low heat setting so that it can dry. I also typically go in with a little bit of holding spray and just let that set in while I proceed with the hairstyling. Now that the hair is straight and trimmed and edges are laid, then I'm gonna proceed with curling the hair. I did do quite a bit of layering on this client's hair, but for some reason my camera cut off the entire time so I didn't get to show you guys. 
but hopefully you get that you're supposed to do the layering before you start curling the hair obviously so this client is getting flat iron curls I highly recommend flat iron curls when you're dealing with really long hair the flat iron is typically a little smaller than the barrels on a curling iron unless you use a small barrel curling iron uh, but for me my flat iron got tighter curls and since this client's hair is really long I want it to be as tight as can be so that there can actually be a curl when it's all said and done. You know, as you wear your hair, it tends to fall, the curls fall out, all that stuff, so. After you put the curl in, then you wanna go ahead and stick your finger through the middle and pull the curl up and then pin it down close to the client's scalp so that it can set in place. The key to curling hair is however the curl cools is typically how it's going to stay. That's why a lot of times when girls are, um, want their curls to last all day long, they'll definitely set their curls with pins and let them cool completely before they begin to style it. With this client, we wanted a more of a natural loose look, just some body and volume. That's why I'm not setting her hair because we weren't looking for an extremely curly look. Also, her hair is shorter, so it's easier to achieve that full-bodied, voluminous look with the curling iron. I wanted to give you guys an example of how to style your weave with both tools. As you can see, whenever I am finished curling a curl, then I typically like wrap my fingers around. That's just because sometimes little pieces will get tangled and you want to make sure that it sets in the way that you want it to stay. And you can also see that I'm curling the hair away from the face on each side. That's just for this type of style. Feel free to get as creative as you want with direction of the curls, but I typically do this style. It's like the most natural feeling and my go-to. A lot of clients like it. Most girls who do hair do this. So when I get to the top and I'm now blending her leave out with the weave, then I'm adding some hairspray, some spritz. That way, once I put this iron on it, then it'll kind of set together and it won't have that separation. It'll look like it's all blending. You don't wanna to put too much spritz on this part, just a light spray. As you can also see, I'm not taking that curling iron close to the scalp. I'm kind of pulling it away because I wanna have like that big curl at the top and then it gets a little tighter toward the bottom. That's how we're gonna create the volume. And right here on the left, I just wanted to give you an example of me doing a curl in someone's hair when it's not straightened. This client's weave hair was not straightened. It was still kind of wavy and I was still able to achieve a curl. So like I said, if you don't have any special trimming to do to their hair, by all means, don't waste your time straightening it out. And here's another example of just the direction that I hold the flat iron. Sometimes flat iron curls can be a little difficult, especially when the hair is a little tough to just pull through. Everybody's hair is a little different. The type of hair your client brings you is all a little different. But this is just an example of the direction that I hold the flat iron when I get to the top of the hair and I'm working on the right side of my client. And now I'm going through on the left side and I'm doing the same thing, but now I'm curling the hair in the opposite direction. As you can see, because this client's hair is a lot longer and fuller, I'm doing smaller sections with this flat iron. Also because the flat iron is smaller, it will heat up that curl a lot better if you use smaller sections. If you want to have bigger curls, then you can just use bigger sections, as I'm doing with this client. So now we're getting to the bangs. Typically, no matter what tool I use to style the rest of the hair, I like to use a big barrel curling iron when I get to the bangs, unless for some reason a client wants really tight bangs. But for like those really loose bangs that kind of just push into your face and have that nice flow to them, this is the key. Now I did not know this for a long time, so just in case you don't know this and you're a beginner, this is the key. 
no matter what you do, always set your bangs because you want your bangs, at least that bump in your bangs, you want that to last even if the rest of the curls kind of loosen out. Now you can either do three horizontal sections right on top of the head where you're curling the hair away from the face or you can do three vertical sections where you're kind of working your way up from the temple to the top of the head and you're just curling that hair in the same direction as you did the rest of the curls. I didn't show that in this video, but if you understand what I'm saying, then you can experiment with it. And before I go through and finger through all of those curls, then I'm gonna add some holding spray just to get those curls to set Also be sure that you don't cause any dents in your client's hair, especially on the bangs when you're using the curling iron. So you kind of pull the hair back a little and lay it over the barrel before you clamp the barrel shut. And since we set these curls with pins, then we're gonna put the hairspray on before we let them out. And step five, you're gonna go ahead and style your client's hair as desired. I'm gonna add some bio silk to my fingers so that anything that I do to the client's hair, I'll be able to smoothly glide my fingers through without causing too much friction. And when I say style, that just means like going in with combs and just like lightly combing through just to set that hair exactly as you want it because you're gonna add another layer of hairspray once you get it as you desire. I'm going in with some hairspray and a small comb so that I can kind of like style this client's bang out of her face. It's still gonna drop into her face a little bit, but we don't want it to drop into her face too much because it's just not gonna suit her face and her head shape as much as the other client. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends. I appreciate all the love and support. I'll have another video up for you guys next Sunday. God bless.